I'd just like to sort of um, start off really by telling you sort of essentially my journey uh, around Dmetrics because it, it's, it for me has been a, a very special um, event or series of events o over the course of the years. I went to my first Dmetrics conference actually uh, back in 2002 which was the second one that uh, Jim ever held and um, I just uh, come out of working in a, in a dot-com business um, had sort of ended up uh, essentially setting up my own consulting business and had stumbled across a book in a, in a bookshop uh, in Oxford, which is where I live, um, written by this guy called Jim Stern, called E-Metrics. And uh, it was really cool because it's the only book I ever had come across at that time. I'd read his white paper with Matt Cutler, um, but then sort of got into the book. And then I found out he had this thing called uh, E-Metrics conference going. So I sort of um, had a word with the bank manager and he agreed to let me go to Santa Barbara, which is very nice because I'd never been to the West Coast before. And... Um, it was, it was a fascinating event. There was about 90 of us, I think, um, sitting in a room probably about this, this kind of size um, in a very nice location in Santa Barbara, talking and thinking big thoughts. Um, big issues like log files versus page tags. Um, so those sorts of issues have moved on. Um, but other big thoughts like how do we make ourselves heard? How do we wrestle with all the challenges we have with all this data? So some things haven't really um, moved on at all. And so for me, coming to eMetrics, and if this is, in fact, I did a count this morning, which shows how sad I am counting things like this. Um, this is my 21st uh, eMetrics conference uh, across uh, a number of different locations. And I always look forward to coming to eMetrics because I always feel that I learn something. And I learn something from listening to, to other speakers. I learn something from conversations I have uh, with people um, in, uh, in various industries and various walks of life. So it's always, for me, a learning experience. Uh, with the exception um, of one, uh, and that was um, Munich in Germany, um, round about this time last year, in fact. Because uh, what I hadn't realized when Jim asked me if I would uh, be kind enough to come and present at eMetrics in Germany, was that the whole two days, other than my talk and Jim's talk, was conducted in German. <laughs> now, I, I, I know a little bit of German, but my German is not great, to be honest. And so for two days, essentially what I heard was this, blah, 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 KPIs, blah, 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 MVT, blah, 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 web optimization. So um, my learning experience wasn't great on that, but it, it sort of reminded me that I should probably warn you guys as well that actually this presentation is being delivered to you in a foreign language, okay? <laughs> Which is called English. And uh, as a result, what you'll see is some inappropriate use of the letter S and uh, some irresponsible insertion of the letter U. So um, apologies aside, I hope uh, given that you'll be able to uh, stick with me. Uh, if at any time during the course of the session you don't understand what I'm saying, either because of my accent or because of the content, then please, you know, say so. Um, you know, the room's filling up, but hopefully we can make this uh, a reasonably interactive session. My aim is to, to leave about 10 to 15 minutes um, at the end for questions. So, um, you know, hopefully we, we can sort of have a discussion um, there. So the, the title today um, is Tell Me Something I Don't Know. And this was actually a brief that was given to me by a client um, some time ago now. And I've been working with their vendor um, to so basically plumb in their web analytics system, quite a sophisticated uh, system. And so we were there. He said, right, tell me something I don't know. And we had that sort of slight Rumsfeldian sort of kind of moment when I said, well, what don't you know? And he said, I don't know what I don't know. So, so I said, well, how will I know that you don't know what it is that I find out for you to know? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> so it, it, it really sort of summed up for me some of the challenges that we still continue to face uh, in this industry. And the, the fact is that when you sort of think about where we are, we're surrounded um, by numbers. And so what I'm going to talk about today is basically about the use of things like data mining techniques and predictive analytics to try and harness you know, some of the challenges that we have. And, and it's, not, it's not designed to be scary, okay? This, this presentation is not about equations and, and uh, you know, sort of deep data sort of, um, sort of concepts and stuff like that. I mean, so that's not to be sort of, it's not designed, as I say, to, to be really scary because, you know, things like this, these are things that are scary, 
Okay, and I promised Jim I'd never ever show that photograph ever again back in 2006. So what I'm talking about is, um, is really sort of the challenges that we face. And again, this is, this is not new for you guys. You, know, you live and breathe it all the time because we're just surrounded by data. Anyone who's doing any form of, any form of, sort of sophisticated digital marketing is surrounded by the numbers. We're not short of them. We have, in fact, what we call shed loads of data. That's, a, that's an English technical term for a lot. And it's not just online, it's increasingly offline, it's not just site, it's voice of customer, it's everything. So it's no wonder that we're sort of completely frazzled by all of this. And, and, the, and the other challenge is that we keep this stuff in silos. My silo picture hasn't come out very well on this projector, um, to be honest. But you know, we keep all our data in silos, so even actually moving data around is, is pretty hard work as well. So it's no surprise, really, even the best of us find it a bit of a challenge to to, to sort of wrestle with all of this stuff. My good friend Albert here, it drives him crazy as well. So, but here's the challenge, you know, it's our job as, as analysts or as consultants to help our businesses or indeed our clients to navigate through this stuff. And as Jim was saying yesterday, to, to begin to really extract the signals from all the noise. And we know there's a hell of a lot of noise out there. But it's hard. In fact, it's really, really hard. I mean, Eric, as I say, coined, coined the phrase, web analytics is hard. And I've always said, it's, yeah, it's hard. It's really hard even when you don't know what you're trying to do. But even when you're trying to know what you're trying to do, it's really still hard to extract those really key insights from all this data. And so maybe we just need better tools. And indeed, the tools are getting better. You know, the, the tools that we are familiar with, our web analytics technologies, are getting better. You know, today we get a tool for free that eight years ago, nine years ago, would have cost us tens of thousands of dollars, pounds even. Today we get that technology for free. So the tools are getting better. The cost of data collection is almost zero in a lot of cases. So what's then what, we, what do we actually do with it? Well, we need new tools in our toolbox. And that's really what I'm just going to talk a little bit about today, is to talk about other tools that we might want to start looking at in terms of helping us to address some of these challenges. And that's really what I mean by data mining and predictive analytics. So what are these things? I mean, there are sort of phrases that are becoming a little bit more common. We're talking about these things a little bit more. We're hearing about them a little bit more. So here's my sort of thoughts and definitions about what these beasts really are. For me, data mining is about discovering things that I didn't already know. So it's about uncovering patterns and relationships in data that I may not have already thought about. Okay. And on the flip side, and they are to some extent two sides of the same coin, predictive analytics is then using that information, using that understanding to then think about what might happen in the future. So it's about applying those historical patterns to predict those future outcomes. Let me give you an example. Okay. Let no speaker at a conference ever tell you that size does not matter, okay? We all come to these conferences thinking, I wonder how many people are gonna to come to my session, yeah? It matters, okay? So I, I've, I've done a number of these things. I've done a number of these things at, uh, at eMetrics and in other places as well. And so I've got a pretty good data set now. So what I was trying to do when I come to these things is sort of think, I wonder how big my audience is going to be. And I've generated a series of hypotheses about what influences the size of the audience that I'm going to be presenting to. So first of all, for example, there's the size of the conference. The more people there are at the conference, the more likely that they're going to turn up in Concourse 1 at 11.10 on the Tuesday. The length of the conference, two days versus three days. To be honest, the longer the conference, the less sessions individual sessions that people tend to go to because they like to you know, pace themselves. Yeah. The day that you have of the presentation, whether you're day one, day two, day three. So, so far I was thinking, I'm doing okay actually. It's a three day conference, okay, but you know, numbers are getting better, we're coming out of recession, and uh, I'm on day two, which is a pretty good day actually. Day one, people are still warming up a little bit. Day three, people are flagging a little bit. But day two, I'm pretty good. So here the planets are all sort of beginning to align a bit. So what's next? Well, the time of the presentation, that makes a big difference, obviously. You know? 
And uh, I'm just after coffee, so you'll all just be refortified. Day two, so things, again, looking pretty good. Obviously, you don't want to be after lunch, you know. But actually, before lunch, you've got to be a little bit careful because people can think about, you know, where they've got to go to processing their surname into a segmentation and trying to work out whether they should go upstairs or downstairs. So you've got to be a little bit careful. Obviously, the number of tracks is quite important. So we're running a few tracks, but not as many as I've been in before. And actually, the big one, the killer one these days, is anyone else presenting on social media in one of those other tracks? <laughs> because if they are, you're doomed. Okay? But I've checked. No one is presenting on social media. Okay, so all the planets are aligned. And so my prediction was 3,596 people would be in this room. So, okay, I've probably, probably overestimated slightly, and I have to go back and recalibrate my model. But that's just a, a trivial example, really, of what we mean by data mining. I've got a, a, data, a data set. I use various techniques to understand the patterns and relationships between what I'm trying to predict, and then I use that to give an understanding or to get, try and get an understanding or to reduce the risk around a certain outcome. So, as with all these things, analytical, we need a process. And this is the really important part. We can have all the stats in the world, we can have all the data in the world, but unless we have a good process, then it really comes to naught. So what I just want to talk a little bit about now is really this, this data mining process. And, and it's not really just purely around data mining itself. For me, it's just an analytical process, which actually is, is more likely to give you good results. It's actually based on a, um, a process called CRISPDN. I've uh, just debranded it because uh, I didn't want to get too technical on that. But you can look these things up. There are others around there, but they all follow the same sort of flow, really. First of all, we have to develop our business understanding. So here we're really talking about, let's articulate the problem. What problem are we trying to solve here? What is the business trying to achieve? What are the outcomes? I, I have a phrase which I, I picked up from somewhere else, but it's one I use a lot. What does good look like? Okay. What are we trying to achieve? So that's our first part of our, our process. And that, that you know, is about talking to stakeholders. It's about understanding what the brief is, defining those objectives, and being quite hard about what actually the business is trying to achieve. And importantly, if they find this out, what are they going to do about it? What is their ability to execute once they have the insights? The second phase is then data understanding. Do we have the data to be able to answer these questions? And if not, what is the cost of acquiring that additional information? Is it worth it? Do I have to go off and maybe do some more primary research? Do I have to go and talk to my mate over in the CRM department and get the data off him? How long is that going to take? What kind of quality is the data in? What level of integrity do I have around the data that I want to use? Because you know, a lot of data, or well, most data, is imperfect. And that might then influence what you're going to get out. And maybe some compromises need to be made, but they need to be made in the open. They need to be transparent. The next phase, then, is data preparation. Most data is not in a fit state to be analyzed. We use very sophisticated technologies to take this horrible, raw, clickstream, noisy kind of data to generate something we can use. And all data is like that. All data is dirty. We need to clean it. We need to transform it. We need to take it from one state to another state. And this takes a lot of time. And this is really where the heavy lifting really is in this process. We'll talk a bit more about that in a second. And then the third stage, or fourth stage rather, you can tell I can count, is actually the analysis and modeling phase. And there's a whole bucket of tools in the toolbox that we might use. And that's very much driven by what it is you're trying to achieve. You cannot come at this with saying, oh, we're going to use this kind of model. That has to be driven by what the business is trying to understand, the data that you've got available, the state that it's in, then drives and determines the methodology that you might use. From that, I need to evaluate the outcomes. If I'm building a model, for example, how well does it actually work? And that comes from two perspectives. 
How well does it work from a statistical point of view? Does it hold up to statistical rigor? Can I be confident in the results? And secondly, does it work from the business point of view? Can I actually do anything with this? Can I make a difference? Can I change the way we make decisions? Can I improve performance, reduce risk, whatever it is I'm trying to do? And then the final stage is the deployment stage, which is actually about driving the insight into the business. That might be just standing up in front of the board and telling them what's what, hoping them to influence them and then we'll make better decisions. It might be a whole technical deployment of a scoring system, which you then layer back into a, a customer database to generate some kind of targeting or some kind of lists. But at the end of the day, insight without action has no value. So that's the process. And what I really want to do is just to um, hopefully bring this to light a bit through a couple of case studies.